we? How are we? How are we? How are we? Are we well? Are we having a good time? A blaze. Day one. Day one is slowly coming to a close. I hope you enjoyed it. We just have one more thing we are going to do today. And that is have a panel discussion. Do we know what a panel discussion is? We don't? Great. So what's going to happen is, I'm going to call up a few people. They will come and sit here, basically to answer our questions. We're going to have a discussion with them. It is a discussion. Um, so we'll be hearing from you, and we'll be hearing from them, and hearing from you, and hearing from them. So they will not be the only ones talking. And as we discuss, the team... Uh, Gina, are you here, Gina? She's not here. Okay, then I will ask. I will ask Jerry after he brings these chairs. Jerry will find us papers. So if you have a question, you just write it down on the paper. You'll pass it to Jerry, and he'll bring it to me. And he'll bring them to me. So our theme today is very interesting. In the morning, Reverend Alex took us through Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. And for me, the take home, as he encouraged us to not conform to the standards of this world, but to be transformed by the renewal of our minds. As he was encouraging us, he told us, he encouraged us to read Yes. Um, you can just to read the Bible. And that's how we'll be transformed by the renewal of our minds when we study the Word of God. However, sometimes it's a bit difficult to read the Bible. Most a bit, it's very difficult to read the Bible. And maybe sometimes it's because the Bible is boring. Am I right? Would we say the Bible is boring? As some guys are saying, I don't fear God. Ah, man, me, I'm just here. Just speaking some people's minds here. Sometimes we say, okay, let's go back and read the Bible. And we go back. Okay, day one, day one, you try and read a chapter. Day two, read a few verses. Ah, then on the third day, he rose again. On the third day, the Bible does not open. So our theme today is, why is the Bible so boring? That's the theme for today. And that's what we're going to be talking about. We'll talk about a lot of things. But you have, if you have any questions around that, around what we discuss, Jerry... We'll get us papers, and we'll be able to write down those questions, and we'll pass them to the panelists. So, allow me just to welcome our panelists. We have Reverend Tendo. Woo! Reverend Lovinsa. Hey, you guys want to be introduced one by one, eh? Reverend Lovinsa. Our youth pastor. We have Reverend Jacinta. We have Mr. Philip Mwine. Why is he hiding behind the tree? <laughs> Bishop Philip Mwine. He's not that one. He's, he's reverend. Okay, Philip Mwine. And Provost, Provost Jude. Where is Jude? No, I'm not seeing Jude. Great. All right. So these are the people we are going to ask very difficult questions. And they will give us some answers. I don't know if these mics can reach us. Eh, hey. hey, okay, we can move behind. That is wisdom. Great. 
Let me also get one for the other corner. Great. Oh, oh, everyone has a mic. Abundance. All right. So why is the Bible so boring? Maybe we can start off with just briefly, you can intro, we may not all know you. So you can just, some people may have a question specifically for you. So it's good if they know your name. You can just tell us your name, something brief about you. Brief. Yeah, then we start off. You can start on my left. So, Nisu Seira, that's my name, but for this session, call me Tendo Kukiman. Sure. Yeah. There's a long story. Because you told us at camp, yeah? The story of Kukiman, yeah, yeah you did. Great. <laughs> All right. Uh, good evening. I'm called Philip Mwine. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Ooh, great. I'm Lovin Katana. I'm also happy to be here. Mm -hmm. So not, no, we're not calling you Reverend. Great. Jacinta Wanjiku. I'm happy to be here. Oh. Yes. My name is my name is Jude. Um, Yay, my Jude. name is Jude Mutagovia. <laughs> Jude, we are going to put you in problems. <laughs> At this rate, they may tear things through the adrenaline. Speakers. Is all right, great. So these are our panelists today. We're just going to talk about the Bible, the Word of God, and uh, yeah, some people, some people feel like really, this Bible we keep being told to read. We have tried to read it. But uh, success has not been a lot. So, maybe we could start off with our own experience. What's your experience with reading the Bible, studying the Bible? Do you, would you say, in your experience, that it is boring? Have you found it boring? Great. Anyone who wants to go first, please proceed. What do we think? What do we think? Okay, uh, let me go first. Um, so, is the Bible boring? Um, maybe by show of hands, how many of you here agree that the Bible is boring? Yeah, it's safe space. Yeah. Do not fear. Okay. We, won't, we won't report you to your parents. Yes, there's one hand there. Two? I saw some hands, but they went down very fast. Okay. Yeah, great. So, yeah. We have um, some people who agree. Yeah, there's some people who agree that uh, it could be boring sometimes. So, from my experience, I agree. <laughs> some days, I find it boring. Some days, I find it challenging to read it. Some days, I find it difficult to understand, and when I find something difficult to understand, uh, as the more I try to understand it, it becomes boring. So yeah, to a certain extent, I agree that some days it could be um, boring. But it is, how is, what do I do after when that has happened? So. Those days when I'm struggling to read it, when I'm, it's, I'm finding a challenge to, to understand, to consume what it is saying, what do I do? Uh, do I close it and I give up and do not open it again? But then also, maybe another conviction is as I'm reading it and that is my initial um, response and then I start in those moments I also check my heart um, I check my heart where is my first of all one is what's the reason why I'm reading the Bible and then um, I also evaluate my relationship in those moments my relationship with God so the days I found it challenging 
to understand. I have tried my level best to hang in there to, to continue reading. I have also gotten tools to help me understand it better. Um, use commentaries to help me, to help with the interpretation when it's getting, uh, when I, I find I reach a very difficult passage. But then also the days that I have found it a challenge, I have, I have a group of three men that I'm accountable to who always check, we always check on each other if we have all read our Bibles. So that alone also keeps me grounded to make sure that I read it, but then also these gentlemen check in, and then I share my experience. Um, but today, I struggled with reading my word. And then also the other person who helps keep me accountable is my wife. Whoop! Yes. By the way, you didn't introduce. Yes, I, yes, I came with my wife. <laughs> She's at the back there. Let's wave to Mine's wife. So yes, um, sometimes we struggle, me and her. <laughs> uh, we wake up early morning at, at 6 a.m. every day to try and read. And some days we drag ourselves out of bed. And some days it's easy, we want it, some days we don't. But the accountability that I have with her that she wakes me up, that I wake her up, and we, we keep pushing each other has helped us continue to hold on and continue to try and read until, um, until it has become better. So I would say that the good days when I'm enjoying it, and then there are some days that I'm struggling. That's my experience. Great. Uh, as we get any more responses, if you have a question, just raise your hand. Jerry will see you. He's at the back. Raise your hand. He'll come with a paper. Or if you'd like to speak, you'll tell Jerry. He'll come and tell me, and we'll get you a microphone, and you can ask on the microphone. So any other thoughts? What is your experience? Would you say it's boring? Uh, my experience, there are times, of course, when honestly it's been uh, boring. I'll give a very recent experience. Uh, personally, I read through a given book for a given time. So at the moment, I'm reading the book of Nehemiah. So on uh, today's, I think on Monday, I was reading, I uh, was it chap chapter five, six, around there. And the whole chapter was full of names. <laughs> These Levites with this number, these ones who belong to this, they were 200 and what? These ones who belong here, they were 200 and something. These ones were 100 and something. <laughs> so, to be honest, eh? and it was a long thing. Eh? I took over 15 minutes just reading that. I was asking myself, <laughs> what do I do with all this? So, of course, there are moments when you read and actually it doesn't make sense. It's boring, actually. There are times, actually, I will confess, when even I've read and slept, <laughs> and slept in the Bible, all those doff, <laughs> and someone has to wake me up, where have you ended, you know? So I must, at times it's boring, then there are also those times when, I'll use this word, when you're flowing, eh? <laughs> you read and you want to, to read more, eh? you just discover, ah, I think it's time to just stop here and move on to something, to something else. So for me, it's a mix of that. those times when it's boring, there are those times when it's interesting. But I'll give an experience which I think can be a challenge to, to us. I've shared it with uh, some guys in TFC, TFC, TFC sometime last year. Uh, the first time I read the Bible cover to cover, cover to cover, she? yes, I was in senior two. Ooh. And I want to encourage someone. How? How did I read? How? So, I would read after lunch, before the next lesson, I would read. I, I was just reading systematically. I would even put a, a, a pen. I would tick where I have, <laughs> I have stopped, maybe early in the morning. Then after lunch, I continued. So I was just reading it casually, uh, at, with no pressure. But I had a target. I must finish this book at the end of the year. And indeed... At the end of my senior two, I had read this Bible cover to cover. 
were some things boring very much. But I had a what? A goal. So the goal kept me moving. But what did that produce? And I think it's what I want you to, to listen to. What it produced was uh, a unique hunger to go back to this word, to this word. Because I left more confused, that is the fact. I left more confused. I left with many questions. I left with many things that I had read but not even understood at the end of the day. So for me, at the end of the day, it created a fresh, a hunger that has actually been sustained to, to, to date. So one of the things I would give you is maybe try to just read it with no pressure. Try to read the way you would read uh, that, that, that history book, that chemistry book, that biology book. Whether you want it or not, you have to read it to pass the what? The exams. So for me, that, that was the first the first thing I did, and then it created a desire more and more. So sometimes someone will be speaking about a text that I remember I read. I'm like, hey, by the way, the way he has explained it now, I understand. Then I get now the courage to go back. And as I go back to it, it's not very, very new, so I go back and internalize it uh, the more. So that has been my, my experience. The last bit uh, from my experience is you start from what is easy. Don't go for hard ones. Start from easy, let me say stories. Eh? You can just let me read the parables of Jesus. And just take them easy. Don't, you don't need to understand the, the other meaning, the other meaning, but first take it easy to just get the story, to just get the flow. Maybe those stories in, in Genesis, Noah's story, Abraham's story. So with that, even when it's boring, but because you're following a given framework, it gets easy. Thank you. Great. Great, thank you for those very practical examples. Any other thoughts? No pressure? <laughs> yes, um, personally, I must say, I have found the Bible boring. Okay, I, sometime back when I was growing up, when I was still young, um, we used to have like, okay, we, we used to have um, uh, prayer sessions at home, like morning glory sessions and all that. So we'd wake you up, and say, please, let's, let's join in for prayer, family prayer time. And so they would read a portion of scripture from those scripture union devotionals. And so everyone had to share what they've, you know, heard from what has been read and all that. So, uh, of course, we were dozing and all that. So you'd make sure at least you hear a word. So when they ask you, what have you heard? So one of the days are like, eh, hey, I have heard the Israelites, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's what I've all together. So... By that time, it felt like a burden, but um, through the time that I've been growing up and going to school, joining uh, different fellowships, uh, within me, I've developed an appreciation of the word, reading it and studying it. So I think personally, if the Bible is boring uh, and you're out there and you, you, you're saying the Bible is boring, to me... Um, I can encourage you by saying uh, it is stages to it. If you love the Bible and you're finding it boring, don't give up on it. Continue growing, continue growing, continue attending fellowship. Uh, maybe as uh, Mwine said, uh, he has people that, you know, hold him accountable. You know, uh, the Christian journey, it's impossible for you to walk alone. Even Jesus, when he was here a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, uh, he had guys that he walked with you know, trove guys. You know, so if you're finding it difficult or boring, uh, you can always find people and the authentic people uh, at the teen service, around church, that can work with you, that um, you can be able to read the Bible with and you will find it interesting. Yeah? Yeah, that's what I can say. Um, thank you. Well, I, I don't know, but I think for me personally, um, I think there are times I'm very selfish with regard to reading the Bible. There are times I am happy and the things I read seem to be going the direction I want. The Bible is very interesting. Uh, but the times probably I'm going through something or someone has annoyed me and I want God to punish them and I stumble over a passage that says otherwise it is very boring for me. God should actually be punishing this person. But God is saying, no, be nice, forgive. So boring for me 
has been on those days or occasions where I feel like it should be saying something I want it to say. I don't exactly what uh, God wants it, but also while growing up, my dad comes from the central part of this country, and for him, we would do Bible study in Vanachula, in Luganda. And there is that book, Chisumuluzo, that we had to, by fire, by thunder, read and in your local language. And so at the end of every study, he would say, Katigoize much. And so even for passages like those that have the genealogies, all those names like Reverend Tendo says, things that were really, really difficult. But I think as I've grown up, I've come to appreciate that, you know what, even these names are here for a purpose, and God is probably pointing us to this. So there are days when it is really, really barring, even with this thing in my neck, days when it doesn't speak the thing I want it to say, but I mean, it is God's word. I'm, I should be taking what it says and not what I want to say it. But it is a beautiful thing. It is God's word for us, and it's God's word that gives us life. And so for me, it is a mixture of all those things as I journey this journey of salvation. I hope that makes some little sense. Great. It does for me. I hope it does for the rest. Um, well, I understand how you all suffered with the Bible. Okay, not suffered, but have found it boring. I have found the Bible boring as well, but I think what has helped me want to learn more about the Bible is, okay, you have these friends who, who know the Bible more than you, and you, you also like, also me, I want, also me, I want to know God like this other person. So yeah, it helps you keep pushing, but also um, I think, as Muni had mentioned, community. Um, I think what, what I've learned is surround myself with community, be it at school, at home, at church, like the people, who ask you, just have you read your Bible today? Okay, what have you learned? Like, even though it's those genealogy things, um, I've just been reminded about how those genealogies are supposed to remind you of Abraham's promise and how God had promised him to have descendants, as many as the stars in the sky. So, yeah, I think sometimes you should, you should look at the bigger picture and not how you want the Bible to make you feel. Yeah. Great. I think if something that has stood out for me through the sharing is community, finding friends, finding uh, fellowship spaces where people really, really dive into the world. I think personally as well, I have benefited greatly from being around people who, who love the Bible, who love the word. And so you, you begin to also see the beauty, the beauty in the word of God. I have some questions here. And I will stick with them. Um, one person says <clears throat> that they lack spiritual motivation. And so it causes the Bible to be boring for them. And they are asking, how can I boost my spiritual desire for the word of God? I think we have been hearing a few, but we can add a few more points. How can I boost my spiritual desire? For the word of God. All right. Um, how can you boost your spiritual desire? You know how you're all in school, not so? And you have to wake up every single day at a specific time, a dress up, and you have to be in class at a certain time, without fail. And if you are not in class at that specific time, there is a consequence, not so? And so you push yourself. Even though you don't want to wake up, you wake up. If your neighbor is seeing you sleeping, they will wake up, they will wake you up and tell you, let's go to class. Why do you do that? Why do you wake up your neighbor? Or why do you make sure you are awake and you go to class before the morning prep bell? It's a discipline. It's a discipline and that is the, it's the, it's the rule that has been placed in the school. But then also now it has become a discipline that you push yourself and you 
get out and go to um, go to class. Same thing with reading the word of God. It is a discipline that you're supposed to grow. It is not just going to happen overnight. You're going to have to get yourself, you're going to have to push yourself. So um, there is no, I think, easy answer to how do you uh, increase your motivation if it's not there. Uh, what, uh, the only thing I can tell you, it's a discipline that you have to cultivate. Um, if you've seen, um, if you want to say learn an instrument, you put in the work, not so? If you want to, anything good that you're going to attain in life, is going to, you're going to get it out of discipline. Uh, if you're going to um, learn how to swim, it's a discipline. If you're going to learn how to play an instrument, if you, go, you want to be a fast runner, you wake up every morning and you go and do the track. It's a discipline. Same thing with the word of God. You're going to have to discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. That's First Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. Paul tells Timothy, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. So even you, if you want to take in God's word every day, you're going to have to be disciplined. You're going to have to set a certain time and every day you wake up. Uh, my wife and I, we wake up every morning at 6 a.m. And they, we tell ourselves that we have to meet God at this time. And that's our motivation. We have to meet God at 6 a.m. So that when I want to sleep, she touches me like, hey, we have to wake up. And the reason why we do it is because I think over time, or not just over time, I think in our salvation, our salvation is a relationship. It's a relationship with God. And for any relationship, you're going to have to invest in it. You're going to have to wake up and you put in the work. To grow any relationship, um, you're going to have to communicate, not so? Any relationship requires communication. With no, real, with no communication, the relationship dies. And to maintain the relationship, it's discipline. So you're going to have to be disciplined to the person who asked, or to the rest of you, you're going to have to be disciplined. Set a time every morning, I'll wake up at 6 a.m., or oh, in the old, uh, Reverend Tendo was telling us it was during his lunch time. He would read his word. So you're going to have to set a time, and then you try and maintain it. Um, one is discipline, and for any relationship that is going to grow, you require communication. Same thing with that relationship with God. If it's going to grow, we ought to communicate with him. And where do we get to hear him speak to us? It's his word. Yeah, thank you. Great. Any other thoughts? How can I boost my spiritual desire? Okay, I could give it a, in addition to what uh, Mwile is saying, uh, the other thing I want to point us to is uh, what do you think of God? You, you get my point, eh? If I let me say your best friend published a book today, Someone that you know, maybe you are, is a classmate, you know, you do life together. If they published a book today, how many of you would be excited to have a copy? How many of you would be excited to have a copy? Some are saying they would want it autographed. Yeah. I like uh, Reverend Lovisa knows this. One of the, the guys I respect most, I love, who taught me at theological school is called uh, Reverend Canon Professor Peter Nyende. He published a book a, week, a month ago. Right now I have about five books on my shelf <laughs> that I haven't read, but I want to read. <laughs> you get it? So I was like, I'm not adding on any, any book until I read these books. But when I heard that Professor Nyende has published a book, I was very, very fast to send him money to have a copy autographed <laughs> and I'm looking forward to reading it. Are you getting it? Why? Because it's someone that I love, someone that I know, someone that I've sat under and so I'm eager to read what they have written. 
So the same comes to one of the spiritual motivations for reading the Bible is what is your view of God? How do you relate with God as an individual? What is, what is that that you, you, you look at when, 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 when the word God comes to your mind? If you think through in terms of this is, this is the guy, I'm just using that language, that sustains me, that provides for me, that actually enables me to move without whom I can do nothing, then partly that motivates you to say, let me dash and read what he has written. Let me hear his, his mind. And even that answers part of the question, when it's boring, what is it that keeps me moving like personally? There are times when it's hard, but what keeps me moving is my view of this God. I'm like, ah, this God sustains me. If this God tells me this morning, no breath, I will not breathe. So because of that view that I have of this God, so I'm motivated to find out what is he telling me. Even when things are hard, the times when I've read, let me give you the best example. Love your neighbor. Pray for those who persecute you. But when honestly I'm like, what Malcolm has done to me, you know, he deserves to, you know, he deserves to be handled. You, you get it? But then I remember, okay, but this is God who has the breath who has my breath, so I may want Malcolm to be handled, then I'm the one who is being handled. You get the point, eh? So that motivates, that motivates me to move. So the question I will pose to you is, how do you view God? And if your view of God gets clearer, then your love to read his word, his book, then also gets uh, better. Thank you. Great. Okay, thank you so much. I think in light of the two, um, understanding, it, understanding it as a discipline, but also your view about God, I think the other motivation can come from what reading this word will save you from, the benefits here. Reading the word has benefits. And so I think once you sit down and get to understand what these benefits are, you, you will be encouraged to want to grab this book because you know it is going to add value or purpose to your life. For example, as you go through pages of scripture, you will come across a number of warnings that God gives to us through his word, especially to us as young people. And once you stumble against these warnings and you actually fashion your life so that you, you do not be found to be on the other side, you're going to be saved. And so I think part of what can also encourage us to have that motivation to study the word is it has benefits. And one such benefit is to help us live a life that pleases God, but also a life that is free from some of those mistakes that we can avoid committing when we do not have it. Thank you. Great. Let's have another question here. It seems you guys have it figured out, this reading the Bible thing. <clears throat> Someone asks, oh, you're still figuring it out. <laughs> Great. You seem a bit further on in the journey of figuring it out. Someone here says, how do you guys handle uh, whenever you start, what do you do to remedy whenever you start reading the Bible? And you immediately think about other things like assignments you have not done and things like that. How do you handle those distractions as you're trying to enjoy the word of God? What do you guys do? I assume you, you guys, you don't have assignments. Eh? Jacinta, for you have assignments. So. Jacinta, you relate. Other people have work deadlines. How do you, how do, you do it? recently started a Bible study at school and and the course I'm doing is not, it's not that you're going to have an assignment today because the lecturers that we have are going to want to give you marks based on how you're going to present and how you're going to submit your work. So I think community is in a lot because um, 
um yeah cuz cuz when you when you sit in the world someone can easily notice man you're not you're not around they call you back what are you thinking about then they'll ask you if god was seated here with you and he was seeing through you for you how do you think you feel if you're there thinking about other things he has granted to you like school it seems was given it to you but you're not giving him time to like to commune with him so yeah i think that's how i can answer that question great thank you any other thoughts uh, just an announcement if you are leaving please uh, leave your tag at the registration desk do not go with it thank you any other thoughts how do you handle those distractions as you study and maybe just there's another person who has a similar question about difficult times they find that as they study the word in difficult times say very difficult times when they have lost a relative or when they have been heartbroken uh, studying the word can be difficult how do you navigate those difficult times as well um i think i, I want to add on to what jacinta has said uh, but also reverend tend already uh, made mention something about it it again for me goes back to what place does God hold in my life? And I want to give an example. Many people find it funny, but I think that is it. Um, if it is my day off, my husband knows it is time for him and for my son. And so, my phone will be off. Even when there is someone to pray for, I ask God to somehow make room for other people to minister to them what i'm trying to say is god my husband is that important to me that i will make time for him and i will not allow anyone to encroach on that space so if god is god in my life i think and jacinta has already said it these other things that seem to come to want to take my thought to them God has graciously given them to me, and so I need none to give them attention. It might be difficult, and yet that is what God is calling us to do. Um, in terms of how we practically do that, maybe speak to those thoughts <laughs> and cause them to submit to, to, to the word of God that you're giving attention to. But I think, again, it goes to what is the place of God in my life? He is, if he's number one priority, then I will give him that time and I will try as much as I can not to allow anyone or anything encroach on that time. And I think my brother Mwini wants to give us some practical tips on how to chase those distractions. Maybe as Mwini gives us another question about like how to practically do it. Um, some of us also struggle in the area of what what does reading the bible mean does it mean i go home and open and whatever i find i just read like where do i start from there are 66 books do i start from the beginning do i start from the end do i start with the gospels how how can i how do you guys read your bible how can we also learn how to study it and enjoy it practically okay um uh, first thing is um i think i speak for everyone that is here that it is something that even us have not yet figured out that this is one discipline that i have found very hard to cultivate i have found it hard to maintain as well so if you're out if you figure if you're struggling um we relate with you and you are not alone but then also i think you being here in the right place one uh, secondly i think how do you prevent the distractions i remember we used to have our quiet time for reading our bible in the morning at seven but our daughter would always wake up at seven. Always. At seven. As soon as we wake up, start reading our Bibles, we hear, Daddy, 
And so, of course, if she's calling, she's one year. If she's calling, you have to stop and you go and attend to her. So I, then we switched it to six. Guess who said waking up at six? <laughs> and daddy at six. And then we switched it to five. Of course, she didn't reach five. <laughs> but anyway, what am I trying to say is um, also the reason why we, to, pre to prevent the distractions is get a specific time. You know a time that does not, where uh, we prefer a time where everyone is asleep, her daughter is asleep. Is, it's a quiet time. That's why I think it's called quiet time. It's quiet, no distractions. So usually mornings are good. Uh, no one has yet woken up. There are very few people to distract you. So mornings have worked best for us. Very early in the morning at six, a quiet time, and the place is also very important. Don't choose a place where everyone is walking in. As soon as you start, then someone comes. So a place is also important. Find a place with very few distractions. If you can lock your room or find a, sp uh, a certain place outside, that's also good. Third is um, one is a quiet, a quiet time, a time when the few distractions, a place. And then the third thing is having a schedule that you follow. Usually, when you have a schedule that you follow, you follow it's easy to keep, uh, to keep the discipline. So we have a specific uh, commentary or devotional that my wife and I use, and we, it has a schedule. And it's very few verses a day, seven verses a day. So find a schedule, find, there are good devotionals around, uh, there is, I think, um, the one with navigators, is it? There's one with navigators. Um, there is daily daily prayer, daily power. There are many devotionals around. You can ask. Uh, maybe if you you're looking for a devotional, can they come? Yeah, you can talk to Malcolm and the team at the end. Find a good study devotional that you can use. Um, Thank you so much. The other bit, I would, I'll, I'll, I'll use more experience then so that you pick whatever you can pick. So for me, I've told you the first, my first one was to just <laughs> go systematic. Genesis through, you know, then uh, I've tried that. It has its advantages, it has its disadvantages. Then uh, the other thing I've tried out is uh, to follow a devotional. The way he's saying, uh, when I was in, uh, especially the I, uh, about senior five, senior six, I was using daily power. Daily power has a given uh, text for the day. You read, then there is a commentary, then a prayer item at the end of the day. Then currently, which I think I've done longer, is to follow a given book. I read through a book systematically, and uh, what I do, I get a Bible with headings with subheadings, eh? such that uh, it does, it, I may not necessarily read a chapter, but I may just read in between given what? Given headings. For, so at times I may read a chapter, at times I may read a few verses within a given heading, or at times I may even overlap from one chapter into part of the next uh, chapter. But one of the key things I have discovered is uh, read with a pen, read with somewhere to to, to not, those are some of the practical bits. And as you read, these are key questions that can help you, that can help you to pick the most out of it. The first question is, you know, what does this say about, you know, about me? What do I have to do with this? <laughs> the second question could be, okay, then what should I do? Then that even informs your prayer. For some of the things, it's you may read and it's just knowledge about God. For others, it may be a specific instruction that you really have to, to, to follow. For some, it could even be a challenge about your own uh, life. So, have a note, take a note, and respond in prayer at the end of the day. Thank you. Just to add one. Yeah. Um, I also used to, like, I used to read, like, um, like a portion of scripture, like, every day, random, from random books. Uh, but since I think last year, but also this year, 
Uh, this year, uh, I did I did my I, I did a book study on Ephesians with some people, but also I'm now doing the book study on John. But as you as you do a book study, I think it is so good you are able to get uh, the context of the book. Uh, why was the book written? Uh, to whom it was written? And how is it relevant today? But also, what I found out is when you're reading a book like. For example, I was reading Ephesians. I was forced back to go and read Acts, yeah, to understand Ephesians. So when you do a book study, uh, it helps you to understand the Bible uh, wholly, to understand uh, uh, the book. Okay, you may be reading one book, but you find yourself also understanding other books. Ephesians, when you are when you're going to read Ephesians, you have to go and read. Acts as well to understand uh, Paul's missionary journeys to Ephesus, how he went there, and all that, so that you understand. So, as you do a book study, it helps you to also go go through and understand the other books. Yeah, it is it is a good approach, but also the other one is also cool, but this one is much more better. Yeah. Great. I have a serious question here. Uh, this person is a bit discouraged. Because they have tried to read the Bible, but they have been discouraged by others because others have told them that Bible they are reading is fake. It is not true. And so they are asking, how can I know that it is true? Um, in order for them to have faith as they study this Bible, that what indeed they are studying is the word of God. How do you people handle those objections, those people who tell you that the word of God is not true, it's fake. Um, of course, this is a little bit long, but uh, just a quick one. Actually, even as we think through all this, one thing we must come to terms with is that uh, what we have is actually God's word. There are tests to prove that it's God's word. Some of you now, the beauty, some of you do, do, do sciences and all that. But there are different tests, even from a scientific perspective, archaeological perspective, to confirm that this is God's word. I can just give you quick tests. Uh, this book, actually this is a collection of 66 books. Now, these books are written by different people. And they were written at different times. Uh, and these people that wrote them, wrote them under different circumstances. They had different occupations. Let me give examples. You have a, a guy like Paul. Very learned. Very learned. Then you have a man like Peter. Illiterate guy. Then uh, you have uh, a man like Moses. Royal. Grew up in the what? In the palace. Then you have other guys where nobodies. All right. All contributing to this what? To this book. But also the span of time from which the first was written to the last is really, really a long time. Yet, interestingly, as you carefully examine this book, you'll find that uh, this book is in harmony. Written from different times, different authors, uh, and these authors wrote from even different, you know, areas. But yet, all this is in harmony. So that is the first test. The second test is actually the Bible itself. The Bible affirms itself. We know that popular verse from uh, Second uh, Timothy three sixteen: All Scripture is inspired, or it's God breathed. It is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for training in righteousness, so that a man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. We have other other portions. Psalm one hundred and nineteen verses verses one zero five. Your word is a lamp for my feet and the light for my path. Then the illiterate Peter goes on to write that no 
prophets of scripture ever came by men's will. But these men that wrote were led by the spirit. So, scripture itself attests to the fact that it is the word of God. And there are so many other tests, but when you look at all those tests, you come to the conclusion that actually this is the word of God. Then I will end by, uh, by this. I'm forgetting the, na the name of this guy. One of the serious current historians in the UK recently uh, is a lawyer, one of the big legal guys. I'm forgetting the name. Once I get the name, I'll post it to one of these youth guys to see. But I was watching a documentary where this guy says, uh, as a lawyer, I, I, I deal with evidence. And he's like, but the more I subjected this book to the legal tests, the more I came to a conclusion, it cannot be less than the word of, of God. So you know, there are so many tests. There are so many, you know, things that we can consider to come to the fact that actually this is the word of God. And actually it's even that conviction that it's the word of God that actually even motivates us to read more. Yeah. Great. Any other thoughts before we get our last question from Zen? Zen had a question from Winnie. I don't know if he still does. Is he? Do you still have a question? Oh, okay. Okay. I, I think to add on to what Reverend Tendor said, um, personally, I have found that I am very prone to sin. I don't know if you guys are okay. But me, I am very prone to sin. And when I am not reading God's word, I am I'm even more prone to sin. More prone to sin. I sin easily when I'm not in God's word. Um, Psalm 119 verse 11 says that um, I have treasured your word in my heart that I will not sin against you. That's one thing that keeps me in God's word and that's one thing that makes me sure that this word is true. There is nothing I have read that has changed me or made me a better person than God's word. There's, some, there's nothing I have gone, um, there's no day I've gone in God's word and I've left and I've not been a better husband to my wife and I've not been a better father. But the days I am not in God's word, I am more, um, I, I get easily angered, I get easily frustrated. So how do I know it's God's word? It's changing me. It's making me a better person. So that's one thing that makes me sure that this is God's word. It's, in, it's making me better. And you want to grow, you want to be better, I recommend you reading it. Try reading it every day. And I promise you will become a better person. And you will then, you will be then sure that it is God's word because it's making you better. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I think that's a good end to our session here. Thank you for the questions. Yeah. There were many, many more. Oh, Jude, you have yeah, something, just something to say. Is, uh, to encourage us as we interact with the Bible, yeah, you are supposed to read the Bible, study the Bible, meditate, yeah on what uh, you, you, you have studied, meditate on it, and then do, yeah? You, you can't um, have um, lips, you know, full of Bible verses and then a heart full of hatred. So you need to study the word of God. You need to uh, read, study, meditate on the word, and then do the word. Yes. But I would say that. Great. I think that's, that's important. Thank you. All right, there were many, many more questions. We didn't have time to handle them. But you see those people who have green tags. They don't have green tags for, they have those green tags for a reason. So if you have a question, there were some really good questions. Some were outside our theme for today, so I didn't ask them. But please, you grab your group leader after a small group 
and ask them some of these questions. If they don't have an answer, they will also ask someone else and they'll get you the answer. So I, I encourage us, do not fear to ask those questions. Let us talk, let us continue to have these discussions during a blaze and beyond.